Could you please tell us um, what you see as the alternative and if there are any examples of a well-functioning alternative and how we would transition from our current system to that alternative? Yeah, there's alternatives, just as there were alternatives to feudalism and slavery and to Bolshevism and fascism. Uh, namely, dismantle the repressive institutions and place power in popular hands. Uh, it's always, it's never an all or none business, you know, so there's elements of it all over the place. Uh, for example, unions, let's say, were uh, uh, a big attack on the uh, privileged character of uh, uh, private power of the opulent minority. Uh, the, the sort of social contract that developed from around the mid-19th century uh, was the result of a, a social reaction to the new science and its doctrines. I mean, what basically happened is, the, if you look at the history, the, uh, uh, by around 18, the 1830s, it looked like the masters had won the day, you know, end of history and all that sort of thing. Uh, the, in England, that is, they had legislated you know, the rules of the new science, people have no rights, uh, can't live on the market, go somewhere else, etc. Uh, the only problem was that it turned out that the British Army was spending all of its time putting down riots uh, because people got the weird idea that if we don't have a right to live, then you don't have a right to rule, you know. Uh, and then it got worse because they started labor organizing and the Chartist movement came along and so on. Well, you know, fortunately, the science uh, is rather flexible uh, since it largely is an instrument of ideological warfare, and it just changed. So the same people who were giving the old story, like Nassau Sr., now said, yeah, it turns out, according to the new science, uh, that uh, people do have other rights. Um, by the time you get to, say, John Stuart Mill, you have sort of, you know, kind of a social democratic picture of political economy. And that leads the way to the social contract and the welfare state. Okay, that was uh, an improvement. Took a long time to reach the United States. And the United States didn't really come until 1930s, and it was always weak. Uh, it, how weak it is, you can see by looking at the newspapers right now. For example, in South Korea, uh, workers are struggling rather bitterly right now to protect themselves from uh, laws that have always been in force in the United States. In the United States, the laws have always permitted uh, corporations to fire workers and replace them not just with scabs, which is bad enough, but with permanent replacement workers, meaning kick them out if they try to organize. I mean, that, the United States has been censured for that by the International Labor Organization. I think it's the only industrial country to have been censured. But here it's kind of taken for granted. In South Korea, you know, they don't accept it, and that's what the big struggles are going on. With industries trying to impose it, and the government and the working people are rejecting it. Uh, so, you know, we don't... The idea that we have to go teach people how to be free is, you know, a funny idea. Uh, but... Uh, uh, all of these are steps, have been steps forward. There are a lot of rights that were not recognized before. Uh, voting rights, for example, franchise, uh, economic rights, social rights, they're always under attack. Uh, right now they happen to be under sharp attack. Uh, and uh, there have been uh, more serious attacks against the whole conception of uh, absolutist rule. So they're all over the place, but maybe the biggest one is uh, in Spain, the big Mondragon. Uh, enterprises, which is one of the most uh, successful economic enterprises in Spain, you know, industry, banks, uh, communities, and so on. It's essentially worker owned. Uh, this came out of a kind of a left Catholic tradition. Uh, and it, it's, you know, it's not utopia, like it has managers and so on, but it's worker owned uh, and been very successful. Uh, one of the more successful parts of the Spanish and European economies, in fact. Uh, and there's other things all over the place that you can look at. Uh, but uh, these are just constant battles. You know? I mean, there's a constant effort to uh, construct, you know, to intensify the system of absolutist control and state power supporting the rich. Reagan and Gingrich are extremes. Uh, and there's always a popular struggle against it. Uh, as uh, to the uh, asking, is there a viable alternative to absolutist rule, that doesn't really mean much. It's like asking in the 18th century, is there a viable alternative to kings and princes? 
Well, you know, you couldn't point to one. You couldn't point to a parliamentary democracy in the 18th century. Did that mean you couldn't have parliamentary democracy? No, it didn't mean that. It meant you could have it, but you have to create it. 